31, we're at the end of section 2.5. So let's take a look at the summary on the solutions to a quadratic equation. So if we have our quadratic equation in standard form, set equal to zero, and we define our discriminant as b squared minus 4ac, we're going to wind up with four possibilities. Right, there's going to be two possibilities for when d is positive, a possibility for when d is zero, and a possibility for when d is negative. And this is going to tell us the type of solutions that these, these equations have and potentially how many of those types. So here, here's what I mean, let's go into it. So there's gonna be four possibilities. If D is positive and a perfect square, meaning let's say you got your discriminant to be four or nine or 16 or 25, anything like that, anything where it's a perfect square, then the quadratic equation is going to have two real rational solutions. Now, if it's positive, but it's not a perfect square, so any number than those perfect squares, which is most of the time, all right? Most numbers aren't perfect squares. So if D is positive, but not a perfect square, then the quadratic equation has two real irrational solutions. So the key piece I want you to hear here is that they have two reals, two real solutions. A couple are rational, and if you're like, well, what's a rational number? All right, again, rational has that word ratio in it. So it means I can write the, solution is a fraction. And here, when they're irrational, it means I can't write them as a fraction. So not rational, not a fraction. So some kind of repeating decimal, unrepeating decimal. All right, so we've got two options for when the discriminant's positive. Now, if the discriminant is zero, then the quadratic equation has one real solution. All right. If the discriminant is less than zero, then the quadratic equation has two complex solutions. All right, so let, let's try and back this out and just kind of connect some of the dots, right? You have three cases where you have two solutions. So if the discriminant is positive or negative, you're going to have two solutions. All right, if the discriminant's positive, there are gonna be two real solutions. If the discriminant's negative, it's gonna be two complex. If the discriminant is zero, it's the, you've got only one solution and it happens to be a real number. And let's see some of this playing out because it might sound overwhelming, but we've already seen it in action. So here's what I mean by that. Back in example five, when we were using the quadratic formula, we had a discriminant of 48. All right, so let's see. If my discriminant here was 48, let me go to my options. All right, my discriminant was positive, okay? And it was not a perfect square. So my discriminant was positive, so I had two real irrational solutions. And that's, that's correct. We had two solutions. I had negative three plus two root three and negative three minus two root three. And radicals are irrational. You can't write them as fractions. So I had two real irrational solutions. Okay, I want us to take a look at example six. When we did example six, we had a negative radicand, right? We had a negative discriminant. So if I look at the options here, right, when my discriminant is negative, we see I'm in option four, then the quadratic equation had two complex solutions. Well, I did have two complex solutions. If you remember my solutions to example six, they were three plus i root 71 over eight and three minus i root 71 over eight. Those are two complex numbers. They have the form a plus bi. All right. Now, if your discriminant is ever zero exactly, you're gonna have one real solution. And, and let's think about why. If I go back to my quadratic formula, right? imagine that the quantity under this radical was zero, right? And then I would take the square root of zero, which would also be zero and I would take negative b plus a zero and negative b minus a zero, and it would just be negative b. So when your discriminant is zero, the only solution you actually wind up getting is negative b over 2a. All right, so with that, we're gonna look back at what we did in example eight. We're gonna think about those discriminants, and then we're gonna qualify the number of solutions that we have. So we're gonna determine the number of distinct solutions for the following quadratic equations, and then we're gonna classify them as real or complex. All right, so let me move this up so that we have the four possibilities in view as well as the problems we're dealing with in here. So just to review our work from example eight, 
we knew that the discriminant was zero here, we knew the discriminant was negative 59 here, and we knew the discriminant was 92 here. Okay, so if my discriminant is zero, then I know I'm going to have one real solution. Okay, great. If my discriminant is negative, which it is for part B, right, if it's less than zero, then I have two complex solutions. All right, and just to remind you, this means my one real solution is going to be x equaling negative b over 2a. Two complex solutions means I'm going to have some i's, some imaginary numbers. I'll have two um, solutions of the form a plus or minus bi in here. All right, when my discriminant is positive, all right, I have to just decide, was it a perfect square or not a perfect square? Well, 92 is not a perfect square. So I'm going to have two real irrational solutions. Okay. So with all that, that rounds out section 2.5 for us. So let's just take a look back at what we, we should have under our belts while we're reviewing quadratic functions. Right, so we should have talked a little bit about how to solve equations, solve quadratic equations by factoring. And again, this tends to be one of those things that we're supposed to know how to do, but we've forgotten. So there's plenty of opportunities to practice. I, I connected or I, I added all of those Khan Academy videos to, our, um, to the lecture video page site. There's a couple of worksheets up on Canvas that you can practice so you can get your skills back up to speed with factoring. We talked about the square root property, completing the square, the quadratic formula, and we've talked about the discriminant to determine the number of real solutions, real or complex solutions in a quadratic equation. And again, our three main methods for solving quadratic equations are factoring, completing the square, and the quadratic formula. These two always work. All right, you will always get solutions when you use either of those um, methods. I just personally, I prefer factoring if I can. I'll factor initially, or not initially, I'll, I should say I initially look to factor because it tends to just be a quicker method for solving an equation. And if I can't factor, I usually go over to the quadratic formula. All right, gang, that rounds out section 2.5. I will see you in the next section. Thanks so much. Bye.